All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think uh, I hope everyone's uh, full with food and uh, rested, some drinks, perhaps. Uh, and to start off, uh, since we're sort of inside, oops. Yeah, since we're inside a building, I would like to show you a, a picture outside a building. Uh, and this, of course, indeed, a very beautiful building that uh, you see that it actually has a sort of a blue uh, windows. And of course, also blending into the blue sky uh, behind it. A beautiful picture and a beautiful uh, buildings. However, this also reminds me that actually a lot of the light is actually being reflected outside uh, of the buildings. And that's of course because of the solar coating that we have to use right now in order to uh, moderate the temperature inside, but also to reduce the HVAC energy that we are using. And this, of course, helps us lo a lot in order to maintain uh, a comfort uh, within the building itself for the tenants. However, if you look at the current energy problem, we are now face we are still reflecting 30% of the light outside, but we are the the building itself still consume about 40% of the uh, total energy consumption. Um, so of course we don't want it to happen, uh, and we are facing a problem of energy that in the future, we really, really need to work together uh, collaboratively or collectively. We need to make sure that the building itself should be and have to be uh, energy neutral or zero energy buildings. And of course, besides that, we need to use that energy to do some uh, good. And that's by, for, exa for example, making your buildings more smart or intelligent. And using that, uh, you can you can make yourself you make your buildings adapt to the different surroundings, different uh, system, different weather. You can also make your buildings um, having more, providing more comfort or customized settings for your uh, for your uh, building owners or actually the tenants inside. So collectively, we need to do that. And today, I'm going to focus more on the energy generation part. And that's, uh, that's uh, hopefully done by uh, one of our coating. So that's why today's focus will be on glass coatings that recycle sunlight instead of throwing it away. My name's Joe, and I work in Fizi. Fizi is a startup from Netherlands. Um, uh, and I'm uh, working in Fizi as a research engineer. So actually, currently, Fizi already uh, provides a solution that's called Smart Skin Solution. A Smart Skin Solution which helps uh, provides uh, the electricity and data generation windows, but also we use the electricity and data generated to feed into the building climate system and to uh, adapt your buildings. We use that to communicate with, uh, with your building uh, system. We also use that to control the, your facade application. And that's what FISI already uh, offers and sells to the market. However, you can also see that there's uh, quite a lot of untapped potential. And the untapped potential lies within right in the middle of the, the building, uh, sorry, the, the windows. Because a lot of sunlight is passing through directly to your in, to inside of your buildings without being collected by the, by the PV modules that we currently have. Um, the untapped potential, that's the 30% of the light I'm referring to that's being reflected outwards at the moment. And we want to, of course, use that potential in order to um, maximize the building's efficacy. And that's uh, done by uh, one of the concepts, that's luminescent solar concentrator. A luminescent solar concentrator having a luminescent coating can really help your buildings to activate the whole window surface for electricity generation. And in order to do that, luminescent solar concentrators can be easily uh, categorized into three steps. And that is absorption, emission, and conversion. Our luminescent coating will be applied onto a, uh, onto a, a, a windows uh, totally. They can then ab absorb part of the sunlight. And these part of the sunlight can then be uh, emitted uh, since because of the luminescent behavior. It can be emitted uh, as a wave, the, with a wavelength change a little bit. And then the emission can then be wave guided toward the edges. Once the, wave, the emission reaches the edge, it can be uh, converted by the solar cells that we install currently at the edges. So the absorption, emission, and conversion. And using that, what we hope for is actually that without uh, 
without compromising on our aesthetics. And that means by absorbing 30% of the sunlight, we want to achieve a uh, power generation of around 30 watt peaks. And of course, using that power generation, you can then uh, further triple our current uh, potential, but also we actually tap into those untapped potential. Uh, to do that, with Finfizi, we are studying uh, different deposition technologies. Uh, for example, uh, one of the most widely used uh, e-control coating that's by uh, a, a vacuum deposition uh, uh, sputtering that we can already we are already studying into it, and we can then incorporate it easily into the current uh, e-control system. Another way is by uh, dispersion, and by dispersion coatings that you can. We are talking about, for example. Uh, lamination, working with PVB interlayers, or working with uh, other types of uh, interlayer system. Uh, a third one, for example, for optical windows, uh, you can then, of course, then with a row-to-row -row deposition, you can then uh, put into the uh, a sort of a wet chemical coating or solution-based coatings. And lastly, of course, besides studying these fundamental science, we also make prototypes that can already be installed with, uh, by the current facade builder, uh, making the LSC concept within Windows. And we also study their efficiency. We study how do, how do, the, how do uh, perfectly use this energy uh, and also distribute this energy into the nano grid of the buildings. So we are now talking about industrial feed technologies or industrial feed techniques that can be applied by different technology or different depos deposition techniques. We are also talking about a research, a fundamental science research that uh, largely uh, we are working with TU Delft, uh, that's a university in the Netherlands. However, uh, as people always know that uh, the sea is never smooth, uh, the coating or the glass will also never be unshattered. So that's also what we face. Uh, and this is actually a picture of our co-founders, uh, Ferdinand and Willem. They, uh, this actually is our very, very first power window. And uh, on the day of that we made the power window, we are very excited about it. And we roll it out to the, to the sunlight to test it. And uh, what happened, uh, you can see that we actually shatter it. So of course, these kind of production uh, development or hiccups is there. And of course, it's also there for coating development. Uh, and these are some of the things that we uh, discover or we recently notice from our scaling up, from scaling up the coatings. And of course, today with so many experts here, I would like to invite you to also think along on these questions, or actually reflect them on your own per, uh, own questions. And uh, I would like to urge you to approach me later if you have any uh, insights. So I'm gonna go into uh, each one of them. Uh, that is. For the first one, a large surface annealing. So annealing or any heat treatment, tempering treatments is usually used to activate certain coating uh, technology uh, properties. For example, it can be a mechanical property, it can be an optical property. In our case, we need to activate the luminescence of the windows or of the coatings. And annealing on a small scale sample or five times five uh, centimeters sample is very easy. However, on a larger scale, we need to talk about the equipment, the kind of uh, temperature that we are using, or the kind of uh, ramping rate, because they crack quite easily. For example, in this sample, you can see that it actually cracked because we are trying to use a flash annealing technology. Um, and of course, lastly, with different gas environment or different um, atmosphere, you are able to achieve different kind of annealing properties. So these are the, some of the questions that we are still facing, and we would like to invite people to join us on the discussion. The second one, uh, with a different type of, uh, with a different type of coating deposition, uh, that is a dispersion coating. Uh, what we are, you, as the name suggests, dispersing means you need to uh, d uniformly distribute your particles. And in order to do that, you are making, for example, using dispersants or using a surface modification, for example, silenization. Uh, you are also using choosing the right corresponding polymer metrics, whether it's PU, uh, polyurethane, whether it's PVB, whether it's uh, EVA. Uh, you also need to add some sort of additives in order to make sure that uh, this particle dispersion is dispersed well. However, as you can see here, with different kind of polymer, you are actually generating different kind of properties. And it can be, for example, luminescent coming from your polymer. 
It can also be that uh, the emission is directly uh, absorbed. It can also mean that there is a quenching uh, happening. And quenching, of course, uh, means that uh, probably slightly different, but quenching in luminescence means that the uh, luminescence itself is uh, killed, let's say. Uh, so these are some of the questions that we would like to invite, for example, the polymer experts here to uh, join us on the discussion. Next one, that since I was talking about quenching, um, quenching could also be a result from different process. For example, it can be a clustering process where uh, that due to the thermal treatment, due to the annealing treatments, that clustering happened. And clustering happened, when once clustering happened, it also could mean that a concentration quenching happened. A concentration quenching happened means that you have a higher concentration, concentration at uh, local spots, which then kills your luminescence. It can be a thermal quenching, of course, also. So once you heat up your sample to a, an undesired temperature, you kill your lum luminescence again. It can also be because of the different defects that you produce uh, while you're scaling up, you have more and more uncontrolled parameters that you introduce more and more defects into your coating or into your coating layers. And that, of course, again, leads to a quenching. That's the death of your luminescence. So, of course, then I would like to invite people who have knowledge on the quenching property or, for example, the uh, defects or how to determine the defects in, in the coating to join me on the discussion later. And lastly, uh, that's the, when we have the absorption and the emission. So the light, once being absorbed and emitted to the edges, it has to be converted into electricity to be used for, for example, charging your cell phones. And that process has to, be, uh, make, has to be made sure by having a light going through the edge of the window toward your solar cells. And in that case, glass edge finishing becomes a very important parameter. So for example, using laser could be a way to make sure that your edge might have a better property than uh, before. Uh, in order to couple the light from the glass into the solar cell, you could also apply a coupling medium that we, what we say light coupling medium. And light coupling medium could be, for example, a epoxy resin, a uh, silicon, uh, EVA, or a different kind of lamination process. It could also be a tape process, for example, using a, applying a tape of a, uh, a transparent tape to it. Uh, and lastly, by knowing or by learning from uh, the experts of uh, application of these kind of light coupling process, you can also minimize your, your errors or defects. And that's coupled to the uh, earlier uh, statements about defect-induced quenching. So to summarize, I'm talking about these four, yeah, these four scaling up challenges that we recently noticed. And we are still working on them uh, to make sure that our coatings can be incorporated into a current deposition system as fast as it can. Uh, and of course, we work a lot, and as a startup from, uh, from Netherlands, we work a lot with our partners. And uh, to give you slightly more, uh, a better example, which I, oh yeah, you can see it. Yeah, to better, uh, to better illustrate our, some of our problems. For example, for the large surface annealing, and that's the graph over there on the left, uh, we recently uh, uh, work, or actually we work very closely with uh, NSG Pilkington, and uh, one of our research engineers, Sadiq from Overbeck, he actually went to UK to deposit the, these coatings. And then we learned that with different kind of annealing gas, you are able to actually uh, get different kind of uh, luminescent intensity. And these are just done by a normal uh, toughening furnace. So we can really, really study the effect of these kind of large scale annealing process uh, with a partner. For example, in chemical reaction, we are actually working with a uh, commercial waterborne polymer. And uh, just by mixing these waterborne polymer and study their luminescent property, we were able to study how the particles are distributed and also how the particles may react with your uh, waterborne polymers. With luminescent quenching, we're actually working with uh, partners on our, some of the PVB extrusion process where we put our uh, particles into their system and to learn how these PVB extrusion can affect your, your particles. And for example, in this graph, you are seeing that 
at different location, we are recording different amount of intensity, which means you are actually having an uh, uneven distribution of your particles, or actually there are some also chemical reaction happening to our particles. With, uh, on the right-hand side, that's the transmission spectra recorded with different uh, coupling medium or coupling tapes from a commercial tapes. Uh, we are also working with uh, partners on that side in order to uh, try to understand how, how different kind of tapes could work and how to apply them properly uh, with uh, the best property that we have. So that's really, really working with a partner, a large-scale partner or suppliers or a commercial uh, strategy, strategy partners to understand all these kind of scaling up challenges. So at the end, these are actually what we call the art of scaling up. Scaling up the coating, scaling up the coating to a degree that you can apply it directly into a commercial uh, industrial deposition technology. And this, of course, is not solely done by a small company. It really requires the, the help of these large partners and also the help of uh, these different experts uh, inside the industries. And, of course, Last but not least, uh, FISI is also, of course, working toward uh, with different uh, research activities. So besides the one I just mentioned, uh, if you find some, if you don't immediately find something that can match that match your your interests or match your professions, uh, I still really would like to talk to you about uh, different kind of processes because I think uh, collaboration is the key. And to sum it up. Uh, we are still talking about glass coatings that can recycle sunlight. So glass coatings that can recycle sunlight instead of throwing away the 30% that's being reflected outwards. So today, after my presentation, besides, of course, talking to us on our technical challenges, I also urge you to look around in your surroundings and see the potential that has not been already tapped yet, the untapped potential. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, Joe, thanks very much for your, your talk. Um, do we have any questions from anybody at this point? Anybody? Yes. Hi, uh, Karl Anders Weiss, Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy. Um, which uh, photovoltaics technology do you plan to use? Should this be silicon PV with cells or a, a thin film technology which can be applied without distances between cells? Yeah. Uh, at the moment, we're, we are using silicon solar cells because it's a commercially ready product. Uh, but of course, our solar engineers from FISI, we are also looking to thin film technologies. Uh, and in particular, for example, CIGS thin films are also one of the technology that we are looking into. Um, so indeed, both thin films and crystalline silicons are on our on our own they are on our roadmaps uh, at the moment. Okay, anybody else would like to ask any questions? No? Okay, well, thanks very much, uh, Joe. Thank uh, you. Round of applause, please, for the speaker. Thank you very much. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why don't you like the video, drop us a comment below, and share the video as well since GPD is all about sharing. And to receive more videos in future, subscribe to this channel and don't forget to click the bell icon. Ciao.